Discovered wife's 15 year affair with her best friend when text popped up on our smart TV. I confronted her, told our kids, and filed for divorce. I, 45M, have been married to Amy, 45F, for the last 15 years. I'm an executive at a company whereas my wife is a homemaker. She used to work at a plant nursery in her 20s but after our marriage, she chose to be a homemaker. We have two daughters, Emma, 13F, and Ella, 11F. Ours was a happy family until the truth of my wife's adultery was exposed. Thanks to the smart TV, okay, so last week, it was our friend, John's birthday. He has settled in a different country for the last few years. We video called him at midnight to wish him. After wishing him, all four of us, me and my wife along with John and his wife, were caught up in small talks, about work and life. He didn't have any other plans for the birthday night, so we decided to hang out virtually and relax for a while. His wife suggested that we can Chromecast the WhatsApp video call through the TV, in that way, we can sit back, relax and have some good time together. My friend's wife and Amy are also good friends and we used to hang out a lot when they were in the city. Anyway, Amy connected her phone to the TV since the TV remote app was already installed and active on her phone. We grabbed some beers and snacks and enjoyed the virtual celebration. After a while, Amy felt dizzy and dozed off on the couch while John and I kept chatting. His wife was also asleep. About 15 to 20 minutes into it, the call got disconnected due to internet fluctuations, and my wife's WhatsApp screen popped up on the TV. I was just about to call back John when I noticed some 10 plus unread messages from someone named Lifeline with a heart. I was a bit surprised because it was not me. Curiosity got the better of me and I clicked on the profile picture and found that it was her childhood friend, Matt. I've met him like a zillion times after my marriage because my wife was close to him. They were neighbors and school friends. She once told me that everyone around them in the neighborhood as well as in the school thought that they were either dating or would eventually date each other. However, that never happened. According to my wife, she didn't see him as a romantic partner, besides, Matt was not interested in women. As of the current status, Matt was single. I wasn't that troubled seeing my wife's lifeline because she told me that he wasn't interested in women. However, just then another message popped up from that chat head, baby, I miss you. It triggered me to dig into the matter. I hesitantly opened Matt's chat conversation. I found that my wife was chatting with him all this while, through her phone when we were connected on the VC. Sadly for him, she unexpectedly dozed off without giving him a good night kiss and that's why he was blowing up her WhatsApp. After he got the blue tick on his messages, his messages came to like, why ain't you replying? Is everything okay? I can't sleep without your good night kiss, I can't get over after today's session, OMG you were so good today. This cannot be a conversation between good friends. By then I was certain that their relationship was beyond friendship. I scrolled up the chat to find that they sexted almost every night, OMG, what murky conversations they had. While my wife slept peacefully on the couch, I went through all the filth she had with her lover friend. The chats had occasional flashes of X-rated photos and nudes in between, which gave shivers down my spine. I was numb yet I wanted to know everything which happened between them. I didn't know how to take screenshots of these conversations on the TV so I used my phone to click the pictures of the TV screen. After taking 4-5 to five pictures, I was done. I didn't care about gathering the evidence. I wanted to how and why. I wanted to yell, howl and leash out my frustration, yet I didn't know how to confront her. It was 2 a.m. and I was already down with countless bears combined with a few shots of scotch, I barely had any energy to move or even think. I just kept scrolling through the chat, seeing my failed marriage in front of me on the big screen. Everything looked baseless at that point. She shared every minute detail with her lover, even the details of our intimate moments. In fact, after every private moment between us, she used to repeat the same with him, in order to compensate for his feelings. I felt disgusted. I wanted to know when all of this started, hence I kept scrolling but it looked like a never-ending sea, which got deeper, even after reaching the deepest corner. By then, Matt's messages had stopped coming and there was a dead silence in the house. I felt haunted. I grabbed a cushion lying beside me just to ensure that I wasn't dreaming or hallucinating. I was still scrolling mindlessly when Amy suddenly woke up from her slumber. Her sleepy head suddenly got hyperactivated on seeing her dual life displayed on the TV screen. She immediately snatched the remote from my hand and switched off the TV. She then pounced on her phone and disconnected it from the TV. I just kept staring at her, dumbfounded. I saw her opening her WhatsApp chat, glancing through her lover's chat, and then closing the app with a huge sigh. That long breath was a sign of surrender. She understood that I knew everything. She held my face with her hands and came closer to me, saying baby, I can explain, please listen to me. I stared back at her and replied, sure, please explain. She was astonished at my response. She was expecting that I would hyper-react and won't listen to her. I would have done the same if it was 2.30 p.m. instead of 2.30 a.m. I was almost passing out, partly because of the alcohol and mostly because of the unraveling truth. I repeated, damn it, explain. She was at a loss for words, she murmured. Actually. Hmm, well, I said, you know what, don't try. You know you're screwed. 
Saying this, I limped my way to the bedroom. She followed me. I turned towards her and asked her to stay out while slamming the door in her face. I heard her knock a few times but I passed out soon after. The next morning I woke up heavy-headed and almost forgetful of what happened last night. I went out of my room to fetch a bottle of water. My throat was dry. Seeing me coming out of the room, she rushed towards me, and with that sight, all the harrowing memories of last night came rushing too. She tried to hug me but I asked her to back off. She retreated with teary eyes and a puppy face. She told me that I misunderstood. I ignored her and went towards the refrigerator to fetch a water bottle. She kept nagging at me that I was just overreacting and he was just a friend, they never had any physical relationship, it was only on chats. It was just a healthy flirt. I wasn't ready for a confrontation yet but her lame excuses agitated me and I screamed louder. Really? Who the earth sends nudes to male friends? And what does that sexting mean? Wasn't he supposed to be uninterested in women, then how the hell did he find interest in your private parts? It was a Saturday morning and gladly my children weren't at home. They were with my parents for that week to enjoy their summer vacation. I stared at her asking her for an explanation. My mental state was running pathetic. I wanted to get to the core of the situation, despite knowing that it would crumble me to pieces. I wanted her to confess every detail of her crime yet I felt like throwing up whenever she opened her mouth I grinded my teeth asking her to speak but then shut her up when she spoke. IDK what I was doing. I know I acted unreasonably but how else would someone react after knowing that he was being cheated for the last 15 years and his entire married life has been a sham? I gulped the entire bottle of water at one go and then asked her to confess everything from the start, or else I'll thrash that dual face lover, black and blue. This time instead of covering up or pleading she revealed the truth. She confessed that she and Matt were always lovers. They got into a physical relationship in high school and since then they continued with it. However, Matt was a lazy bum and made it straight to Amy that he can't afford to provide for her. To give a little context about Matt, he's a school dropout, who has never earned a penny on his own. His parents had acquired a few decent properties in the suburbs whose rental yield is keeping his expenses afloat. However, that is not sufficient to pay for two people. I met his parents a couple of times during my visit to Amy's house. They were concerned about Matt's laziness and requested Amy to advise him on taking up a job or starting a business. Everyone except Matt was bothered about his future. Anyways, back to the track. Amy confessed that she did break ties with Matt many a time, due to his commitment issues however, he was always successful in winning her back. Apparently, Matt never had any issues with Amy dating other men, although he never dated anyone but Amy. She had a couple of boyfriends before we started dating, so this sounded true to me, although amazing. What kind of lover does that? I know. Maybe a lazy one. I asked her that if they're that close why didn't she marry him? She said that Matt would have never been able to provide a good lifestyle to her. Besides, Amy too never had a stable job, nor was even aspirational about her career that she could be the breadwinner of the house. So, she chose to be a freeloader and lead a dual life. I asked her one last question if the girls were mine or of Matt. She swore that they were mine I wasn't convinced and still doubted her. She offered to get a DNA test done if I wasn't convinced. She said that she couldn't risk having the children with Matt because she was scared that if her truth was uncovered and I abandoned the children, she was sure that Matt wouldn't be able to raise them, even if he wanted to. I don't know if I should be relieved to know that at least the children were mine. I asked her to leave the house, or else I would reveal her truth to everyone, even to the girls. They might be young but smart enough to grasp the truth. She begged me not to disclose this to our daughter saying that they would hate her and disrespect her. I refilled the bottle of water, grabbed a few beer bottles and went inside my room, and locked it. I sat in front of my laptop and stared at the screen for more than an hour. I didn't know what to do next or whom should I talk to. The truth was killing me from inside, I felt suffocated. After emptying the bottles of beer, I went out of my room, grabbed my car keys, and drove to my in-law's place which was 30 minutes away. My mill answered the doorbell with a pleasant smile but seeing my red face she knew something was wrong. She called my Phil who rushed from their bedroom and sat me down. I was sweating and palpitating with anxiety. I told them that I don't know any better way of confronting this while narrating everything. My throat got dry and my body temperate soared high as I revealed the ugly truth. Midway through this, we heard someone banging on the door. It was Amy. She stormed into the house and asked me to leave, immediately. She said that this was our private matter and that we should deal with it and not involve her parents. The next few hours were a series of emotional rage and turmoil. I rebuked her for cheating on me for 15 years while she brushed it off as a mere casual relationship, which meant nothing to her. Gradually, she shifted the blame on me for manipulating her parents against her and I defended myself. My in-laws sided with me and berated her. I spent the entire weekend drinking, passing out in between, and refilling my stomach with alcohol. The next day was Monday, I went to work feeling groggy and exhausted. At the office, I googled some divorce lawyers and booked an appointment with one. I came back home to find some of her belongings missing. I guess she came home when I was away, packed some of her stuff, and left. I didn't bother to check on her. She messaged me, stating that she would be staying at a hotel to give me some time to cool off. 
Seriously? Did she think the matter was so trivial that I could simply move on? She also sent me messages pleading for forgiveness and making promises about ending her relationship with her lover. It's been a week since that fateful day. Today is Friday again, the week moved too slowly for me. I guess the weekend would be slower. I have an appointment with the lawyer this Monday. I've been reading many Reddit stories to find a solution for my problem but I guess mine is a complicated case. More than myself, I'm worried about my girls. How do I deal with them? How to confront them? Should I even confront them at all? Update, thanks, folks for the sound advice. Apologies for not updating you guys, however, I did connect with some of you over PM and comments. I know it's been 6 months since my first post and let me tell you it was no less than a bumpy ride. I met the lawyer on that Monday and shared my concerns regarding my daughters. The lawyer advised me to confront the children subtly about the separation and not delve into the details as they might get into mental trauma. He also said that since my wife is jobless and seeing the nature of her affair, I have a good chance of getting custody. On the same day, my parents called Amy to pick up the kids from their house. They were still unaware of the situation. She came home with the kids when I was lying drained on the couch after the stressful meeting with the lawyer. I avoided having any conversation in front of the children and was put up in my room. When she came inside the bedroom, I told her to confront the girls about her adultery. She started sobbing and begged me for forgiveness. She kept saying that the girls would hate her for this. I guess they should. She deserved to be hated. What else do you expect after cheating on your family for 15 years? The lawyer said that it would take a week or so to send the divorce papers to Amy. So, I had a week to straighten out things with the children as well as with my parents. I told her that I'm divorcing her. She reacted as if this was something out of the blue. She said that the children would be traumatized by the divorce. I wonder where her motherly feelings were buried all these years. I asserted that my decision is final and gave her the ultimatum of a week to confront the girls in whichever way she liked, or else I would tell them the truth. I grabbed my pillows and dozed off on the bedroom couch. That entire week, I left the house early in the morning and came late in the evening. As the weekend approached, she wailed and cried throughout the night sometimes so hard that I would wake up. I did feel pity for her but how could she do this for so many years? What was she thinking that she would never be caught? She would have got multiple opportunities to cut off her lover yet she continued with him. Our private conversations, my insecurities, my deep dark secrets, everything, she left open in front of her lover, how could I forget all of those? On Friday evening she told me that she had planned a way out to confront the girls the next day. I nodded. On Saturday, after our breakfast, she told the children that we have some news for them. She said that I have got a transfer to a different country hence I would be moving out for a few years. I was dumbfounded while my daughter stared at me. I asked her sarcastically in front of the girls, does this mean that I need to move out of the house, right? She rolled her eyes sighing me to shut up. She said, well, in that case, if the house is too big for three of us, we can shift to my parents' house and later we can find a smaller place. The girls were perplexed at this. They were young but not stupid to not understand the game, she was trying to play. My younger daughter told Amy that whatever she is saying is not making sense, while the elder one questioned us on point blank, are you guys getting divorced? I gave a stern look at Amy and urged her to speak the truth. She sighed and broke down. The girls looked at me for the answers. I told them that they were right about our divorce. I explained to them that we don't feel compatible with each other anymore. My elder daughter asserted that I might be having an affair, and that's the reason Amy was crying. She held her mother's hand and asked her if I was cheating on Amy. Instead of clearing the air, Amy just hugged her in anticipation. The girls gave me a disgusted look. I lost my mind at that manipulative woman. I was stunned to see how she turned the table around me. I told my daughters, everything, how I found out, and what their mother was up to, of course filtering out the A-plus content. Amy yelled at me for backing out on my words. She told me that I gave her the liberty of giving any explanation to the girls then why I didn't support her when she was telling them about my transfer. The situation was out of control and I decided to put my foot down at Amy's manipulation. I called up my parents and my in-laws and asked them to come down ASAP. Both of them live 25 to 30 minutes away and within an hour all four of them were at my house. That one hour was a nightmare for me which I'll never forget in my life. My daughters were crying while hugging me and seeing this Amy tried her best to reason out her actions. She even went as far as portraying me as a liar and manipulating the girls against me. She stopped only when I told her I had photos of those conversations. My parents were shocked to see us in that condition. I narrated the incident in brief. Everyone despised Amy for such a heinous act. She kept sobbing and pleaded for forgiveness. For a moment, I felt pity for her. It hurts me too to see her in this condition but she has bought this on herself. Instead of portraying me as the villain in front of my daughters, she could have just told them we felt out of love or something, but she wasn't ready to own the slightest of blame on her and now her ugly truth lies naked in front of everyone, including her daughters. I made it clear that we are proceeding with the divorce and the girls would be with me. I asked her parents to take her away. Even the girls asked her to leave. My parents decided to stay back for a few weeks and take care of us. It was indeed a tough time for us but glad we came out strong. 
I enrolled in therapy for all three of us and we are in a much better mental space now. My divorce proceedings are going on. Amy has claimed a share in my house which I'm contesting because she doesn't deserve a penny. Surprisingly, she didn't contest the custody of the children, making it easy and evident for us to understand her priorities. During the confrontation and even after that, Amy promised to cut off all ties with her lover. However, after she moved in with her parents, she was caught visiting her lover's house. Her siblings caught her and humiliated her to the extent that she had to eventually leave the house. Her parents humiliated Matt for his actions and informed his parents as well. The last I know is that his parents have cut off all property rents which Matt was getting and asked him to make a living of his own, while Amy is working as a sales agent in a showroom. I don't think about her anymore. I'm focusing on raising my daughter and providing them the best of everything I can. Wish me luck. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Four-year-old son's inappropriate behavior at preschool revealed my wife's affair. I caught her on hidden camera and filed for divorce. I, 32 male, have been married to my wife, 31, for four years, and between us, we've got a four-year-old son. Our son is in preschool. I work long shifts as the primary breadwinner. My wife is in between jobs because she didn't like her old job. At least she's home to take care of our son. Recently, though, we were called into our son's preschool. They said that he had exhibited inappropriate behavior that had started about three weeks ago, trying to kiss girls, lifting up their skirts, and touching their butts. My wife and I were speechless. We could barely explain it because I'm always conscious of never behaving like that around my child. We're very strict about the programs we let him watch and always had a parent present when he went visiting or on playdates. As far as I knew, the only other place he could have picked up such strange ideas was at school. The teachers couldn't explain it either. Especially since he was the only student behaving in that manner. Therefore, they were convinced that he had been exposed to that behavior at home. They had also done their part of talking to him but clearly needed parental voices to back it up. We talked to our son about it and decided to consider therapy in case the behavior persisted. I couldn't shake the revelation though and thought I would have a chat with my son, man to man, and find out what had brought it on. I waited till my wife was away and asked him about his behavior. And all his childlike innocence he told me that the uncle who came over while I was at work did that to his mother, and she had never reprimanded him. To his four-year-old mind, he thought that that meant it was okay. His confession sparked my curiosity. It sounded like an affair, so I asked him a few questions. How often the uncle comes over? Most days. What do they do with mom? Kiss, giggle, and speak in whispers. How long does he stay over? Until I'm about to come back from work. I was furious. I was working hard to provide for our family, taking long hours at work and barely getting enough rest. Meanwhile, she was spending all her time cheating on me instead of looking for another job or being more present with our son. I planned to catch her in the act. So, I laid out my strategy. For my plan, I faked a trip to visit my parents with my son. I told her that we would stay for a few days to free her up since she had been our son's primary caregiver since she had quit her work. She didn't even object or suspect anything. So, I packed up and made it seem like this trip was a genuine event. I had a camera in the living room and left with my son because had no intention of going to my parents I went to my brother who lives nearby. A few hours after we had left our car pulled up outside our house, and the man got out using the camera in the living room I watched as my wife and the man started making out in the living room I was furious beyond belief, sad about my family, and heartbroken for my son. I recorded the video and sent it to her parents, brother, and other close family members. They all called me in a fit. Some of them decided to play ignorant and asked me what was going on. Had someone created a fake video or whatnot? Her parents called me and begged me to forgive the entire affair and try to work things out with her. They insisted that they had not raised their daughter that way and there had to be a reasonable explanation for what had happened. They went ahead to say that they would talk to her themselves and get to the bottom of things. Her brother, on the other hand, was rightfully angry with her. He said he was shocked by her actions and would back me up with whatever course of action I chose to take. My wife also called once she saw the video and started begging and pleading for forgiveness. She claimed that she had been seduced and didn't have it in her to resist. But she had seen the error of her ways and didn't want to lose her family. She insisted that she was willing to do anything to get back into my good graces. By that time I was over the entire relationship. I was disappointed that I had missed all the signs and they had been going behind my back in a house I had paid for. Even worse was the fact that they had exposed my four-year-old son to such behavior. I made up my mind to separate from her. So I asked her to leave the house since I was the one paying for it and maintaining it, it was only fair. I also let her know that we were done. I didn't want to keep up a relationship with someone who would lie to me and disrespect me. She refused to leave and refused to accept that we were done. She kept insisting that we could work it out, at the very least for the sake of our son. I told her that if she would not leave peacefully, then I would have to bring in the authorities, and she would never see her son again. That brought her to her senses. She finally left. I filed for divorce. Through my mediator, I expect to keep the house and the car. We had already been keeping our finances separate. And I'd negotiate no alimony too because of what had led to the dissolution of the marriage. 
and I'd fight for at least 50% or more custody. I have no problem with co-parenting and I will closely monitor what my child is exposed to. I'm going to use her actions against her in full force in the divorce to get what I want. And my lawyer says the ball is in my court. I can't wait to be done with this nightmare and move on with my life.